you line up um the north. So you want okay, so line up the red to the end, and then that's the direction that you're facing. So it keep turning in a way that the red hits the end. Okay. And now so when the red hits the end, that means your compass is aligned. Oh, oh, oh. What's up, everybody? Welcome on into the call up Susanna Collins alongside the lovely Jillian Sakovitz. Um, straight up, this is the this is our last episode during Women's History Month, Jill. And in honor of that, um, we decided to take a little bit of a laissez faire approach with our getting ready process today. So as we'll see, we are both in our comfies, have our hair up, minimal minimal makeup because um, you know what we we put so much effort into this and on that it's not fair it's not fair and so we were just like you know what let's just kick it today um and be relaxo and i feel exactly. good about it i feel and you know good what? about it like oh you know we want to pump up women we do that all <laughs> year long and this and that that we're like you know what what better way to celebrate the final day of international exactly. um women's history month than being our darn selves. Exactly. So um, thank you all for for loving us um, au naturel, because this feels really good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's not fair how much time we have to spend to get ready for this podcast, guys. You all I, have no idea. We put I, a lot of work in, like, uh, in our rundowns, uh, getting guests, you know, coming up with iconic games, uh, <gasps> being the fashion police of the league, which people yeah. want to copy, and Merritt Paulson pays tribute to that. So, But we also have to spend, like, two a- more hours, like, Doing the vanity stuff. I know exactly, and uh, we're we're here to Over celebrate. It. We're here to celebrate not doing any of that. But we have our guests didn't seem to mind. We had <laughs> s- I don't think you know such such a great guest on today. Um, the owner of the Portland Timbers and the Portland Thorns, Merritt Paulsons, and he just kind of he kind of pulls back the curtain a little bit on how he came to be an owner. He um, he talks about his uh, his Twitter persona, his relationship that he has with uh, with social media, because we know that he does not hold back. Um, he talks about Gio Savarese. I mean, we've just, it was a really, really, really interesting, enlightening conversation. And we also found out that he loves this podcast, which automatically makes him a favorite. So Didn't know that before we had him on. Have to thank admit. you. Thank you very much. Um, are we ready for here for this? Here for Merritt Paulson, um, mm-hmm. something else that we are here for this week is yes we know that you all saw it seattle released their Jimi hendrix inspired kits and i want to give a little props to seattle because that is a bold choice for your secondary kits Susanna collins sometimes we see the third kit like get a little wild their second kit is like whoo different colors different scheme um and i do want to call out um seattle i heard it's nice but i have no idea because i didn't get one but Susanna was nice <laughs> enough to show hers To me, and that begged the question. Yeah. Okay, yes. Jimi Hendrix, iconically born in Seattle, Washington. But what other teams should get kind of crazy and go the music route for their secondary kits? And you have a good one. I do have a good one. Um, I because I'll I'll be honest. I I am so here for the music inspired kits. I think it's clever. It's smart. The way Seattle did it was so mindful and just very very. It was just. so cool. So, so cool. So Nashville, hello, Music City makes yeah. perfect sense. And a Dolly Parton inspired Nashville SC jersey would literally would it be this big? make my life. Well, yeah. would it be mini? Like, I would mean, it be skin tight? But she's also, well, we won't talk about the, you know. No, but she's pint size. Pint That's like what you love about her. She's an itty bit. She's an itty yeah. bit. But a Dolly Parton inspired Nashville mm. SC kit would literally make my life. What color and would so, it be? Um, obviously, we've got it. We've got to do something Gold? like pink. We could, well, because, oh. I mean, she, but she's also like, like yellow is a color. She, her latest album, last album was blue. Blue smokes, mm. maybe blue. But Nashville's yellow. I don't know. I think we, we implement some pink in there somehow this i just i think you could get really creative with this so i i would like national sc to make that happen what about you i would have to go like beyonce oh, h-town yes. houston i'm no the houston dynamo could work that into that little rebrand of theirs uh felipe cardenas of the athletic 
Uh, he threw in Outcast for Atlanta. I mean, oh. it goes on and on. Our producer Galena had Drake for Toronto. That's I think that might take the cake. That would be great. Let That'd us know what you want to see, people. Maybe your club will listen. All right, next up, here for this. Um, okay, so we talked about and Kosi Burgess of FC Dallas um, last week. We discussed like mm. they tweeted out that he was going to dye his hair uh, the color of whatever whatever they people responded to on Twitter the most, whichever response got the most like sort of likes and traction that that is what the color that he was going to uh, dye his hair. Well, the clear and obvious winner of that was green because those Austin fans are no joke and they crashed it and were like, Verde, Verde, Verde. All of a sudden then Kosi Burgess unveils a, a sort of, they call it sherbet. It's like a blue and pink swirl, um, which I like, but mm. I'm, but I'm also like, hold on. You did not hold up your end of the bargain. We might be the only Sir. two people out there, Sir. but we've got so eyes am, on you. I am not here for not fulfilling your obligation that you put out there. I think he should have gone green. I actually think it would have been hysterical. I feel like that would have well, just, you know? I mean, he's. I know he's a man of his word. Let's see. It's March 30th. He's got a little time to redeem himself, but don't put those kind of contests out on Twitter if you're not going to live up to it. We're You're a man of your word, mister. And, and we need to see, we're on to you. We want to see that green hair because you lost. Nothing, nothing gets past us. Oh, oh God, Jill. This next one, this next one. I did not understand this. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I, I think it was late last week. Maybe it was Friday of last week. The LA Galaxy tweeted out some photos of members of the team playing a little beach volleyball, which is great, you know? Like, sure. let's get out of the soccer mindset. We go to the beach. We play a little beach volleyball. Everyone's having fun. It's great. So they post a series of photos. Well, there is one photo of mm -hmm. uh, Chicharito, who is um, – okay, uh, he's he's – bumping we we'll call it bumping in volleyball i did talk to me talk to me like a fellow volleyball cow so so when you the first the, the first hit basically is you know they call it a bump mm -hmm. and his form is straight up terrible like you think it, it was a fake shot like hey i do this? don't know but what my my problem is not that chicharito's form was bad my problem is that nobody told him that he was doing it completely wrong. Like these are guys that clearly play beach volleyball. So what's wrong with this? Though? Okay, so in the picture, Chicharito has his hands interlaced like a fist. That is so, it's just, it's, it's, it's elementary. This is your, the, the form, it's just, you gotta get the, I do the thing where you lay the palms in each other and then you bring the thumbs together and that's how you play beach volleyball. That is how you pass a ball. That's, that's how you pass or bump. And nobody thought to tell Chicharito that he looked ridiculous. And then the galaxy have the audacity to post that picture. And I'm just like, what are you doing? No, 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 no. It looked like, it looked like one of those like bad scenes from a, a TV show where they're like playing volleyball in gym class and like somebody like the kids just have no idea what the heck kind of like the soccer players in ted lasso you're like oh a little bit. <laughs> i see what you're doing exactly there. so no i'm just saying i am not here for people not looking out for chicha you may ask why i have a compass on today <laughs> for those of you that that are watching and it's because we want to give love to the cutest team right now in the league in the Colorado Rapids, who mm -hmm. were kind enough now two years in a row to not only send us jerseys. Two years. But like a kind of a survival kit of sorts, which like Lord knows we need it. I've got ferns, um, pine cones. I have a map for when I go hiking. Notes. I mean, tons of notes. And this compass and then this freaking custom jersey that we just love so very much. The jersey is incredible. So the reason that they, it, so it's this beautiful mint green. If you can't see it, uh, um, it's a mint green with like green accents that just really, really pop. And they, they did this to honor the, it's called the class five jersey. And it's to honor the, all the class five mountains in Colorado. And it's just, yeah. it gets just so meaningful. And it has a topographic, it has a topographic theme. Um, and that is just the best and the cutest. I love and it. I I love it because it's unique. And like when, when they sent it, I didn't, I was not expecting this and I loved it. It was such a pleasant surprise. So I just feel like they did such 
a great job, especially on the heels of everything that went down in Colorado last week with the shooting in Boulder. They actually tweeted out um, a jersey that had Boulder 10 on the back, which I thought was just really, really special and meaningful. So um, thank you so much, Colorado Rapids, for, for showing us some love and for just being good humans all around. We love you. We are always here for that. Time now for AT&T 5G call to the field. Susanna Collins, this is a guy who's been on our list for quite some time. Yep. Owner of MLS's Portland Timbers and the NWSL side team and NWSL side, the Portland Thorns, Merritt Paulson. Yay. Thanks I'm for coming up. on. I'm fired <laughs> up. This is one of my favorite pods. I told you guys. I mean, this is, this is, uh, Easy, easy decision for me. Oh I'm my god! I'm honored to be here. We're Very honored. We are so flattered, Merritt. Thank you so much. This it's is the be truth. Great. Well, thank you so much. And fired up. We are fired up too because first things first. The U.S. did not qualify for the Summer Olympics. Third straight failed attempt. Two one loss to Honduras. And after the game, our good friend Matt Doyle tweeted, "If I were coaching the U23s, I'd simply." Sub on Eric Williamson and Jeremy Abobasi for the second half. Merritt Paulson, what are your thoughts? Well, you guys are trying to get me to agree with the Matt Doyle tweet <laughs> in and of itself, which, I mean, I thought these were going to be nice questions. I mean, that, what, what a bit of trickery is going on right here. Uh, yeah, I, I actually uh, tend to agree with them, uh, you know, tr strangely enough on this one. I We were surprised not to have them called up, and mm -hmm. I don't want to – spend time you know taking shots at jason and and the squad selection but uh because a lot of things go into that honestly and it's style of play and you know a host of other uh issues but look eric and jeremy and i'm not objective but they're better players than the people that were selected at their respective positions and they didn't have a lot of proven scoring on that team i certainly if you gave anybody at the Timbers a chance to trade one of the selections for either one of those um, it either the nine, eight, or even a winger spot, we wouldn't agree. I mean, we've got two guys that are pretty proven and are mm -hmm. quite productive. And I think they could have helped that team. Um, but, you know, hindsight's 2020, we should have been able to beat Honduras without them. <sighs> and, you know, I just, I, I do take heart that we've got more young uh, talent in this country than we've had in a long time. And I, hopefully the failure on the Olympic front doesn't, doesn't cloud that because it is a fact. And let's just hope that Greg has better luck with, uh, you know, the world cup qualifications. <laughs> Amen. On to, on to happier topics, uh, Merit MLS uh, released the, the schedule last week, and the Timbers open up their season on April 18th against your Cascadia rivals, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, after, I mean, just a, a tumultuous and crazy 2020, how excited are you for this upcoming season? It's out there, the schedule, it's, it's happening. What are, what are the feelings going through your head right now? Oh, I mean, it's, it, it is crazy. Uh, and we actually opened technically before that, right? Cause we're in CONCACAF. True. So our, our, our first match will, will be before uh, that game in uh, Salt Lake where we will be playing Vancouver. Um, but uh, uh, you know, look, it's been a, a year like none other. And just the fact that we're going to have some fans in this stadium, um, you know, I, it, it's something that, you, you don't know what you have till it's gone at some level. And, and you know that we all celebrate the atmosphere that, you know, we have here and we have in many other cities in this league. And, but it was surreal. And in so many other aspects of last year were surreal um, and continue to be surreal. Well, not through it yet, but, but we all have that light at the end of the tunnel um, right now, but actually hearing real voices and, and, and he real cheers and uh, you know, during a game, um, is something that I will never take for granted again. Uh, and it's something that I, you know, I, I don't know how, what it's going to be like to actually see people in the seats and hear them. And, but um, it's something that will have a pretty big impact on me because this has been a difficult year for our industry. It's been mm -hmm. a difficult year for a lot of people um, in, in, in a lot of walks of life. But uh, there's no question that the, the sports and entertainment and live event industry has taken it on the chin 
um, in a particularly hard way. And, um, you know, this year is a more optimistic year. And, uh, you know, I truly believe by this summer we're going to have a feeling of some normalcy, um, you know, seat back in. And, and, and hopefully we were talking vaccinations before this started. Hopefully, you know, we continue to do a good job rolling these things out. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about soccer and we're not talking about pandemics, uh, I, you know, we will all be very happy people. Let's talk a little bit about owning a soccer team or two soccer teams for that matter. Uh, you and your father, Henry Paulson, um, you're the first MLS family ownership group that we've had on here. Um, and it really fascinates us, like the whole idea of you're sitting around and you got your portfolio and the businesses that you're involved with. And you're like, I want to own a sports team. Um, how does that come about, uh, especially as it relates to, to soccer in Portland? Well, I'm sure you're going to get a different answer from different folks um, to that question. Uh, you know, for us, it was a unique situation. Um, my my broader family, my 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 parents uh, have a philosophy where, where most of what they do um, is is in the philanthropic space, and they're particularly dedicated to climate change and um, environmental issues. And I think their feeling when I brought up the idea of doing something in professional sports was that was more or less a vanity investment that was kind of very hmm. opposed to what um, our family kind of kind of stood for. Um, I'd been working in the entertainment industry for a while. Um, I was at HBO um, where I helped roll out HBO on demand and then working for David Stern and Adam Silver at the NBA uh, for several years where we launched NBA a TV and, and uh, you know, worked on a number of their owned media properties. Um, and I had the idea um, that, uh, you know, really started with the fact that I saw soccer uh, in the United States um, being a question of when and not if the world's biggest sport in ultimately the biggest media market. Um, it, it made too much sense. And, you know, we ended up, we had a meeting with, uh, uh, I won't give you the, the long version of the story, but with Don and Mark in 2005, and we actually talked about the San Jose earthquakes mm. um, at the time, um, buying that team at, at, at a very mm. low price um, uh, in, in hindsight, but, but being on the hook to build a stadium um, in, uh, in, in California and hundred percent financing it. And we passed on that, um, but stayed in close contact. And when the opportunity came up in Portland, um, uh, we jumped on it. It was something my wife and I had to get behind um, in terms of moving out here and living in this city and, and uprooting. You know, she was very successful in, in, in New York, where you guys both live right now and, um, uh, you know, had her own career. Um, but, you know, it was an easy decision uh, uh, at the end of the day. We felt great about about putting our roots down in Portland and, you know, bringing Division One soccer back to Soccer City USA, and the rest, as they say, is history. But I, I do think that, you know, sports is like nothing else in, in terms of the impacts you can have on a community. And, and um, you know, you can be an owner and, and entitled, but it's ultimately a community asset. And the good you can create and the light you can shine on areas in the community that mm -hmm. need to help. And for a business that's relatively small from a revenue standpoint, relative to some of the bigger Fortune 500 companies, you're actually having much more of an impact on the cultural fabric of the city. You're interfacing with leaders in the public sector, with leaders in the private sector. It's awesome. Um, and I feel it. You know, I mean, I, I live it. I breathe it. Um, I care about it really, really deeply, maybe too much at times, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's definitely awesome. How did you know? How did you know that that soccer was going to resonate so deeply in Portland? I mean, you're you're essentially responsible for for Providence Park and this sort of cathedral that it has become for the for the sport of, of soccer. And I mean, Jill and I talk about it all the time. The the atmosphere there is probably our our favorite in the entire favorite league. of the Western Conference. It, OK, fair enough. Jill had to say that. But um, it's 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 absolutely incredible. Um, it's so unique and so special. And the way that the city of Portland has completely embraced the timbers and the thorns 
Um, how did you kind of have that foresight that soccer was going to be the thing that really just resonated with people there? Well, that started long before I ever had an interest in Portland. When you look at the history here, dating back to 1975 in the NASL and the, the, the Timbers and, you know, uh, on the women's side as well. Um, when you look at what the, the University of Portland, you know, the most supported women's uh, soccer program and uh, college soccer uh, has been. And uh, the fact that this city's always taken to soccer, um, uh, you know, in a, in a pretty unique way. I, it was clear that that this was a, a, a an area that was ripe for you know taking that to the next level, and I think we, you know, we certainly uh, did some things right along the way, and the way we've we've you know taken what always was uh, you know a, a, a soccer stadium or a, a certainly a, a geometrically you know rectangular setup and what had been changed to be a multi-purpose stadium that worked for baseball and all whole bunch of everything's and sort of make it back into what it originally was intended to be and the way we've renovated it and rebuilt it. Um, I'm pretty proud of, and, and I'm proud of the way we've connected and expanded our fan base and really proud of the fact that, you know, I, on the women's side, the fact that we've made the, the thorns kind of um, a beacon of light for what uh, women's professional sports can be and the way mm -hmm. they can be supported, not just in this country, but everywhere around the world. You mentioned the thorns and, you know, they are just they're almost, if not exactly as iconic in the city as the Timbers. And you don't always get that in a, in a town that's got a, a men's and women's sport, you know, NBA, WNBA, the whole thing. Um, let's talk a little bit about the thorns. Uh, happy news, soccer fans back to Providence Park um, for their game on April 9th. Uh, you tweeted you're going to have tears in your eyes when you see fans back in the stadium. Um, but let's also talk about the gap and inequality between women's and men's sports, right? It's been making the front pages for a very long time. Most recently, the pretty annoying pictures we saw at the NCAA tournament of the gym that was given to the, the weight in gym that was given for the women versus the men. Um, Megan Rapino recently uh, presenting to Congress about equal pay as a team owner, you own the timbers, the men, right? And you own the thorns, the women. How do you navigate those types of conversations with your female athletes or in, or in general? Um, well, let's not forget former thorn Midge Purse was with uh, Pino as well there in, mm -hmm. in, in D.C. But no, it's an important question and um, uh, one that I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, I, and I think that, that you know, it's, it, you can be framed as equal pay, but it's, it's, it's much bigger than that. It's equal investment. Um, the CarMax commercial that just came out. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. I mean, so good, wow. so I, good. I, and we may be we may be at a turning point right now. And Hope so. when we made the decision to to help launch um, the NWSL with the Thorns um, in 2012, leading into that inaugural 2013 season, and I really took a deeper dive looking at the history. You know, it was as much a problem as as of ownership as anything mm -hmm. else, and um, uh, the wrong people in in um, and, and maybe that's a way that I <laughs> that's a soundbite I, that, that could come back to haunt me. But people that cared, but but didn't necessarily have the resources and the um, infrastructure and the facilities to 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 you know put the league in, and. Uh, you know, I think it's it's a question for media partners as well in, in investing in uh, the women's sports in the way that they've invested in, in men's sports and in, in giving them, um, you know, the, the exposure they need to grow and flourish. And uh, we had really robust ratings for the NWSL last year. Um, and, and, you know, we're proving out the fact that there is a market um, uh, for, for women's sport. And the fact that we're, you know, averaging 20,000 a game um, at the Thorns pre-pandemic um, here in Portland, you know, is, is, is proof positive that, you know, it's not just about eyeballs on TVs. You can have the, you know, same type of atmosphere uh, as well. And I think, uh, you know, along with that, we 100 percent have to, to, to ramp pay up um, and do so in an aggressive way, um, but also in a way where we're able to sustain the league. And, you know, we don't crater the league um, mm -hmm. in the way the prior uh, versions of women's professional soccer have done. And, and, you know, it's a different a little bit of a different question on the national team level with what uh, Pino and those folks are focused on. And I'm not going to touch that, um, but I, I'm supportive uh, of, of their efforts. I will say that.
Love it. Love, love, love hearing that, especially during uh, Women's History Month. This is oh, uh, yeah, that's right. that appropriate that's right. and perfect. Um, Merritt, one of the things that, that we appreciate about you very much is uh, your, your presence within the club, at games, on social media. You know, you're one of these owners. And this doesn't happen uh, a lot with, with owners, but you're very, very visible. And, um, you know, on social media, you're not afraid. You don't shy away from, from offering your opinion. You've gotten in some incredible Twitter beefs with Matt Doyle, um, Alexi Lawless. Um, I, Stephen A. Smith was one of my, one of my favorites. That was such a good dunk. Oh, Thank it was you. just so good. So good. Um, but it's interesting because like I said, we don't, we don't necessarily see that a lot from, from ownership. Why, why is that something that you lean into rather than kind of avoid and take a, a backseat to it? Well, I, th I think the team stands for, the teams have stood for engagement um, and authenticity. And, and, you know, I, I felt like, um, you know, that, that, you know, I am very much part of that for better or for worse um, unfiltered. And, and uh, I think that's, it's primarily been a positive for us. I do think social media has changed um, a, a bit, Susanna. I, and I don't know if you, if you guys agree with me on that. I mean, it's interesting. I, I still, I, I love it. Um, for the right things. And, you know, I love the fun side of it when we can talk about the travesty of Prince William being elected the, the sexiest bald man out there. <laughs> I mean, are you, are, are, are you kidding me? Right. The fun stuff. I mean, is, is really? not, not, you know, is, is, is a bald guy. I feel like I need to apologize. Completely for, overlooked. Completely for, overlooked. For, not, not me personally, but I mean, come on, let's even in our soccer world, Zidane or, you know, uh, Pep or whoever, there's legitimately attractive bald True. guys out there, not him. Uh, but, but, you know, having fun stuff like that, um, uh, or, you know, even, you know, really digging deep in, in, um, you know, on, on the Olympic issues we were talking about earlier. Um, but I do think that, you know, a trend that, that I've seen that's kind of a less fun topic of conversation is the fact that, you know, it definitely seems to be a, a, a bit more of a light the torches and kind of look for controversy yeah. and try to trip people up when they're out there engaging and, you know, it's taken the fun out of it a little bit for mm -hmm. me um, and, and, and probably means that, that I do less direct engagement. Um, you know, it, uh, I, I, I don't know how much of that is, is, you know, just, just what we're seeing broadly in our culture about sort of the extreme polarization, um, you know, and people yelling at each other and, um, you know, getting that kind of psychic validation of starting a controversy or whatever it, it, it may be. But on the whole, I, I've, de I've definitely leaned into, uh, you know, engaging and I, I, I've had fun with it and, and I've made mistakes. Also, I, I will say there's been a couple things I've regretted on social media. Nothing with Matt Doyle, but, um, <laughs> um, you know, with, with certainly with some other things. But ultimately, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're not curing cancer here. I mean, this is sports and entertainment and, and you should be able to have some fun with it. And, um, you know, I, I also do take things personally, maybe too personally at times. And, 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 and there've been a couple of times where I've been sort of genuinely annoyed and tweeted and that's never a good thing. Um, so we try to limit those, um, uh, when possible, but that's not to say I won't make a mistake down the road either, you know, and, and, and all of this, but I'm trying to be a little smarter about it. I would love to see your drafts, you know, like your Twitter drafts. It's like the tweets that never get sent. Like I, I, cause listen, I've got some doozies in there. Ones that I'd love to fire off, but like I drafts, couple, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do a couple. it. I, I, there, I, my fines would even be bigger than, <laughs> than they are. If, a lot of them involved a word that started with F, uh, you know, but, but uh, I, I've had, I, I've had some, you know, my files of tweets I didn't send, you know, are, are, are pretty extensive. Yeah, Suze, we always say we'll share the drafts on our final episode. I know, and we'll invite Mara Paulson on for that episode, too, for the yeah. drafts. Read them all. Okay, so we talk about Twitter beef and all this. I think the biggest, my biggest thing with social media, and we talk about this all the time, is the fact that it's kind of the uh, self-obsession. And if you're going to just do the most annoying, vomity thing, that la that is like the cool thing to do. And if you actually have like a thought, that's just not that cool unless it's like the hottest take in the world. And honestly, then it's just a bunch of BS anyway. But the one thing that I don't think is BS 
is the fact that you were annoyed with Alexi Lalas when he said that he didn't include that the Timbers were on his list of MLS super clubs. So Merritt Paulson, if you were going to make a list of MLS super clubs with Portland on there, of course, who would it be? And also, why do the Timbers get overlooked? Well, what, let's define what a super club is, mm-hmm. okay? Let's. Um, and I think that relevancy has to be a criteria to mm. be on the, the, the list. How popular are you in your home market? You know, what's, what's your sort of Q factor, for lack of a better term of recognition? And, um, uh, you know, wh- what, what are your season ticket holders? Um, you know, what's your atmosphere like? And I think that that's got to be on the list. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and um, I love what's happened uh, with with a lot of the teams uh, recently and, and sort of LAFC adding buzz to the L.A. market. But um, and again, I'm not going to you know, I, I don't need to, uh, to 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 put myself on thin ice in a podcast just like I do. on Twitter. <laughs> but but you're cutting through a lot of other noise in the L.A. market. You know, there's no yeah. question that that, um, you know, the Lakers or, you know, whatever are, 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 are still, you know, sitting atop of that, that, um, uh, sports pyramid. And I, you know, in, in Portland, uh, the Timbers have a pretty unique place in the thorns. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think that, uh, clearly, I mean, there's the obvious, the usual, sp- uh, suspects on who would be super clubs. And I think how you spend and how you've won and, you know, should also be, included but but in my mind portland would be on any top five list and yeah. you know you could talk about atlanta um and talk about seattle um i know I, I i shouldn't shouldn't give them the props that that they're due but but they are um at the end of the day if you're being objective mm-hmm. um and i think you know obviously what lafc has done and the galaxy and the, their success and you know, there's there's some teams that, that, that cl- clearly stand out as super clubs. I just think that ultimately people say uh, too often, you know, the Pacific Northwest, we're not going to pick more than one team from the Pacific Northwest. And, yeah. um, you know, so we're going to do Seattle rather than Portland. And we've been spending like Seattle. Um, you know, we've got our own stadium here. We don't rent a stadium. Um, sure. You know, we've got we've got better kits, we've got more authentic uh, uh, supporters, um, you know, and, and we have a few less trophies, but we're very much a winning team. I can make our case versus Seattle, although I'm also quick to give Seattle their due uh, as well. But I, I think we deserve to be on that list. That is so respectful, Merritt Paulson. Well played, sir. Let's talk about your head coach, who we love and adore on this podcast True. uh geo savarese probably one of our favorite interviews that we have ever done he is just a delight he is a delightful man um incredibly lovely and generous with his his time and his knowledge um so i have i have two questions for you about geo one mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on his new look because he's been rocking that beard and Big we're beard. a little on, we're on the fence um and two have you ever been invited to one of his dinner parties that he told us about and if so, we're jealous. Let's start. Don't you guys do the the best rest coaches? List? Oh yeah. That, didn't Thank that, you, Merritt Paulson. Didn't yes, that originate with you? And you started a Thank big trend. You. I see other people. Thank I, you. I, I think it's a travesty if he doesn't win that he, every year. He I mean, has I, he, low key, great style, unbelievable st- style. And uh, you know, he's friends with Cuccinelli. He's friends with. I mean, he's 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 got uh, he he's he's got like some 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 significant ties into the fashion world that anybody that follows, uh, Hmm. uh, you know, that space would be impressed with, but that aside, his, his tasteful, um, uh, uh, fashion sense, um, aside, you know, he, he's a, he's a joy. I mean, he really is. And the best thing is, you know, the reality of him is even better than what people garner, Hmm. you know, from media and that kind of stuff. He's such a real person. He's such a caring person. You know, every custodian in this building or, or um, uh, uh, server, you know, at any restaurant would tell you the same thing. I mean, he gives everybody an equal amount of time and um, doesn't have a mean bone in his body. Um, I got to tell you, though, the beard, um, I'm not down with. On, <laughs> on him. First of all, I want to know if I gave him that many gray hairs because he's kind of looking like old man winter. I mean, it's definitely very Portland. Um, Possible. But but. 
I, I'm looking forward to, to Gio sh shaving that thing. I'm kind of, and maybe it's just the fact that um, despite being, you know, follically challenged myself, I, <laughs> I can't grow a beard. I like, I have very little facial hair. I could do like a, a, a half goatee kind of Fu Manchu. Oh, no, I mean, no, it's, no, no. It's, it's not good. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, so I can't do a field, uh, I, uh, full, full beard at all. I mean, it's, it's so living in Portland, that's sacrilege to say that, but, um, it, it's come in in a, in a way that's, that's a little bit thick and full and, and white. And, you know, it's got a too much Santa Claus in it for a guy with his style. It's aging so. him. It, it took us, it's him. Aged him. It's it took aged us him. by surprise. It yeah, took it did. Surprise. That's, no, a, that's Merit, why I'm you're... saying you guys hate it. I mean, just come well, out and we say. wouldn't you're say that about him. It would, like, that's the thing. It's like, I love Gio, and I don't want to say anything no, disparaging say about the man. But is it my favorite Gio look? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely I, but, not. But but that doesn't take anything <laughs> away from Gio. And yes, I've been to <gasps> many dinner parties with oh. you. Um, quite a few. And, and I, we've got a spot in a cellar um, here that I introduced him to that not many people know about. Um, it's a, it's kind of a wine cellary type of spot uh uh it it, it zupan's uh it, i don't know if you guys have been out to portland but um oh, yeah zupan supermarkets um are sort of a high-end store and you wouldn't think of that as right being a restaurant right now you wouldn't think about it as being a restaurant destination but in there they have a wine cellar where they do extraordinary meals and uh you know we've we've had nights in there um you know that that have gone five six hours and he just gets going and here hear story after story and um you know it's amazing that the people he knows it it, it it really is and uh the experiences that he's had and i could talk to him forever this uh, is so so he's he's a fun guy and he's got some stories that could never make it on a podcast <laughs> oh. um well so and, do we and, and just, I, I bet you do but but that's that's what you need you need to get the the and it's not like you know it's funny he has he, he he also rarely swears, and he's uh, mm. only nice. coach I've ever met that I can say say that about. I mean, John uh. Spencer, our first coach, you couldn't have one sentence with him where he didn't have like four <laughs> four yes. f bombs. And not, not that I'm a saint on that front either. I'm trying to clean up my own language. <laughs> Is my my kids my kids often remind me there's a swear jar swear jar in our house for me. Mm. Um, and and uh, I I you know I've filled filled that up more, <laughs> more more than I should. The only time it doesn't count for a swear jar is during a Thorns or Timbers game. Exactly. I, have, I have a two hour hall pass on uttering profanity around my family during, during a Timbers game. So that's I think the that one makes time. Sense. But, uh, but with Gio, I mean, getting him to tell a semi off color story is always an achievement. Um, you know, because it's hard to get him to go there, but he's got some good ones on, oh. on that front as well. My my post my post COVID, like everyone's vaccinated dream is mm -hmm. to be at Zupan with this this crew. We get Geo in there and we sit there for five hours and drink some delicious wine and eat some delicious food and we are privy to the Geo Savarese stories. I feel what? like I feel like I'm gonna put that out in the ether and just like try to have that the universe manifest that for us. Let's let's do it. I will open up a couple <laughs> bottles of Tosicaya. We will we will keep it Italian, high end Italian. We'll do some super Tuscans maybe a Barolo or two oh, and, wow. and, uh, and, and we'll make it happen. They do a really good short red meal. Oh um, you know, so we'll do that as the main course, assuming you guys are not vegetarians. Otherwise oh, we, you know, so nope. we'll make it happen. All right. Before we let you go. Yep. Mary Paulson, the Cascadia rivalry is arguably the best in the league. You know, we're talking about maybe some not of the arguably, disrespect. Not, not arguably. I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, there's okay. no better rivalry. You guys have fun with that mm -hmm. on, on MLSsoccer.com mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, all the time. Perhaps. But but Seattle-Portland uh, is the best rivalry in Major League Soccer. And stop. That's and not stop. me. And stop. You know it's true, and I know it's true All as right. well. Like, so if we anybody's are... on a lie detector test, you guys know that's the case. You got to hype these other things up. <laughs> But they're all they're 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 all fighting for second place. We do. It is our job to kind of stir the pot, yeah. you know. Yeah. We got to talking points, talking points. So, so we're really going to make this painful for you and we are going to make you decide between Vancouver and Seattle, your most oh, bitter 
rivals. We know yes. that you are Portland through and through, but if you had to go to the other side, we are going to find out today which side it would be. So can I just, check, Paulson, can I just check Vancouver for every no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will find out naturally where right. you will end up. Uh, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. So I, I could get myself into to, to trouble if I have some Seattle answers, but snow I'll, I'll... or rain. Oh, snow. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Trust you. Um, hiking or skiing? I'm a skier. Okay. And a hiker, but I love skiing more. Okay. Okay. Jimi Hendrix or Celine Dion? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Hendrix, but, <laughs> but and, and yeah, I know he's got a cool factor, but I'm really not that big of a Hendrix fan. But when you give me Celine Dion, it makes it easier. Like, At least you, you could have done maybe Brian Adams or somebody. But it's not that much better either. I mean, Hendrix is Hendrix, so I'll uh, give, give it to Hendrix. All right. Salmon? Or poutine? Salmon. Okay. 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 We are tied to Vancouver to Seattle. Starbucks or Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons. Timmy House. Okay. Snow capped mountains or the Space Needle? Snow capped mountains. <laughs> okay. Fair. That one too. Uh, if you're going to go to a game other than a soccer game, hockey or baseball? <sighs> hockey. Okay, okay, okay. I like this one. I'm real excited about it. Alfonso Davies or Clint Dempsey? Alfonso Davies. <laughs> <laughs> easy. That's an easy one. And I like All right. I, I, I like Clint personally, but give me a break. <laughs> we are six for Vancouver and two for Seattle, but we had a tiebreaker and we'll just use it anyway because I think Good. both these mascots are so average. I've been, I've been totally honest. That's you have? One no. I we trust you. We, yeah. we totally trust you, Mary. We, you know, we should have made it a little harder, Suze. Um, we're should've. making Vancouver sound real good. It's, a, it's a good city. Sammy the Sounder, which is apparently an orca, didn't know that. Or Spike, the belted kingfisher. Well, I, you know, look, my, my, <laughs> mom, my mom was chair of the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and is basically like a hardcore bird. Anybody that would be bold enough to have a belted kingfisher, a belted kingfisher. Out, out there i you got to give the nod to the kingfisher and all right mary paulson heavily we go to thank vancouver you guys. vancouver thank you, thank you. uh merit this was so great thank you so much for your time and uh, real quick will portland win mls cup in 2021 and why yes because we'll be healthy and we would have won it last year if we were healthy and that's why there we go there we go what is on tap? Well, earlier this year, we spoke to Columbus Crew SC broadcaster Jordan Angeli about the push we're currently seeing to have some more women, more diverse voices overall in the broadcast booth. And we're finishing off our Women's History Month celebrations, not only dressed like normal people, <laughs> but with this clip. Take a listen. I will always celebrate the best candidate for the job getting the job. And I think that what we're seeing is an open mindedness about who the best candidate could be. And it's a lot of people and it can be, it doesn't matter um, your gender or your race or your religion, not if you believe in something and you're, and you pursue it and you're good at it and you put your best foot forward and say, Hey, here's, here's what I could offer you um, that you're going to have a shot. And I think that that's we're see what we're seeing. Love that interview with Jordan. Remember guys, you can check out the entire episode on YouTube. Um, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's a great, great conversation. There's podcasts. Great conversation that we had with Jordan Angeli. Jill, the full 2021 regular season schedule is out. Every single club will play 34 games, 17 home, 17 away, culminating on decision day, November 7th. And some exciting dates to look out for include Cincinnati's West End Stadium opener on May 16th. That is against Inter-Miami. That's going to be a fun one. That is on Fox and Fox Deportes. And then, of course, Austin FC making their debut at Q2 Stadium on June 19th against the San Jose Earthquakes. Us, too. Us and Tudigene. I really hope that, like, we can find a way to get there. That would Pretty be amazing. Sure going. Um, but for more information on that schedule, go to MLSsoccer.com, which... By the way, what? is going having getting a bit of a facelift, y'all. Um, keep your eye out for the new MLSsoccer.com. <laughs> Complete redesign with all new features, including a new match center, new stat center, new roster and player pages, and more access to content in all the news and video centers. Um, plus, 
all new episodes of The Call Up and Extra Time, hello, right on the homepage. So um, keep an eye out for that on MLSsoccer.com. Lots of exciting things happening. We are so free and lucky. Woohoo, baby. Um, this we are every day, Jill. We're we're one day closer to MLS being back. Just and gonna I use am... the nice little map that Colorado sent Still us, pumped. and I'll see you soon. Let's do it. Thanks for watching and listening, y'all. And a big thanks to Merritt Paulson for coming on today. Have a fabulous week, everyone. See you next time. Bye.